by transcription. The National Broadcasting Company presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States counter spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. These counter spy reports to the American people are brought to you each week at this time. Now, the case of the kleptomaniac clues. Going on a little uh, trip, Mr. Trafford? What the... I uh, wanted to see you before you left Frisco. Hey, who are you? And how did you get into my hotel room? What's the difference? I'll call the manager and have you... Drop that phone, Trafford. That's better. What is this? What's that gun for? What do you want? That uh, briefcase you're carrying. What? The briefcase. Hand it over and you won't get hurt. I'll do no such thing. Give me that. You won't get away with this. Shut up. Sit down in that chair. Uh, we'll just tie you up so you won't make no fuss while I'm blowing out of here. Just why? Why are you doing this? Just why? For though, what else? I don't know what's inside this thing, but certain people are willing to pay plenty to find out. Well, Mitchell, hmm? you glad to be back in San Francisco again? Or is that a foolish question? <laughs> in view of being met at the boat by you, love, let's say it's a superfluous one. <laughs> <laughs> Darling. <laughs> Always the appropriate sentiment. Well, the Orient has its fascination, Elise, but it does not have you. I hope it was dull, of course. Oh, business was quite good, but nothing else. And uh, speaking of business, how is our little curio shop with its clocks, knickknacks, and whatnot? Excellent, darling. Good. I'm expecting a rather interesting shipment soon. Oh? Will that mean another seagoing excursion for me? It could. Perhaps I'll go with you this time. Would you like that? <laughs> I refuse to answer a question like that. Its intent is much too obvious. Ah, <laughs> oh, darling. Oh, here we are. Ah. Uh, here you are, driver. Uh, keep the change. I left Doreen in charge of the shop. Oh, how is she? As usual. She handles the carriage trade exceedingly well. Uh-huh. At times, I think you're a bit too interested in her. What? Oh, nonsense, Elise. Why, she's hardly more than a child. Yes, I know that, but do you? Oh, Miss Conroe, you're back. Well, hello, Doreen. How are you, Mr. Monroe? Nice to see you back. Thank you. It's nice to be back. How have you been? Just fine, thank you. Was your trip successful? Mm Mm-hmm, very. I'm glad. Doreen, were there any messages while I was gone? No, Miss Pomeroy, but there's a man waiting to see you in your office. A man? Uh, Mr. Omak. A very curious thing happened. Curious? Yes, I... I could have sworn he deliberately put one of our teakwood figures in his pocket. What? And as though he realized I'd seen him, he put it back on the display shelf. But perhaps it was a mistake. Perhaps. Come along to the office, Mitchell. Mr. Omak may be a buyer. Yes, or a seller. See you uh, later, Doreen. It's a lovely girl. If one likes the type. Always waiting for somebody, that's me. I don't like you sitting behind my desk, O'Mac. Oh, uh, uh, excuse me. I hope I didn't soil nothing. Do you have what you were sent to get? You mean Mr. Trafford's briefcase? You know that's what I mean. Do you have it? Yeah, I got it. Give it to me. Not so fast. Well, what is it? There's been a change made since I first talked to you. Change? What do you mean? The uh, price you're paying. I don't like it. Oh, you don't? No, I don't. So you'll have to make it fatter. Uh, tell me, love. Where'd you find this cheap highwayman? Never mind that now. Omac, we agreed on $10,000. Yeah, well, I need ten more. You deceitful pig. You know how it is. Uh, 
cost of living going up and up. I won't hear this kind of street corner conniving. Okay, okay, suit yourself. And may I ask just what will happen if you don't get what you want? The counter spies would love to get their hands on a little setup you've got here. What? You've got till tomorrow to pay my price. You wouldn't go to the counter spies. No? Huh? Try me and find out. <laughs> David Harding, Counter Spy Headquarters, Washington. To San Francisco Field Office. Special Directive to Agent Carl Braden. Re, Mr. George Trafford. Proceed on description of man who stole briefcase and on any other information Trafford can supply. Am leaving by jet immediately. Have correlation of data ready for my inspection upon arrival. End of message. Oh, Miss Johnson, have you contacted Agent Peters in the St. Louis Field Office yet? He's on the wire now, sir. Line number three. Oh, good. Hello. Hello, Peters. How are you, Mr. Harding? Peters, I'm leaving Washington by jet for San Francisco within the hour. I'm picking you up en route, so gauge your time carefully. Right. What's up? No time now. I'll fill you in later. Okay, Chief. I'll be standing by at the St. Louis airport. And preparatory to leaving San Francisco, Trafford stopped to rest at a hotel until his train was due to depart for Washington. I follow most of it up to now, Mr. Harding, but, uh... What do I, Peters? Well, who is Trafford? And just what was in this popular briefcase of his? Well, Trafford is in no official capacity with the government, Peters. He's merely a private citizen who happens to be an astute industrial organizer. Sort of an efficiency expert, hmm? Yes, you could call it that. And the big top secret in that briefcase? A draft of plans for mobilization of certain key industries. Plans, factory locations, working schedules, objectives, probable results, so forth. I see. Which, of course, was intended for the hands and eyes only of the defense coordinator in D.C. I wonder in whose hands and under what eyes they are now at this very moment. That's what we've got to find out, Peters. And fast. This is Elise Pomeroy. <laughs> I was expecting your call. Quite sure of yourself, aren't you? Yeah. And uh, I'm even more sure of you. You still demand 10,000 more? That's right. I was thinking of a counter offer. Shall we say 7,500? You know, uh, I can't hear a word you're saying. 8,000. I still can't hear you. So long, Miss Pomeroy. Wait. My price stands at 20,000. You can't auction with me. 20000 or like I said, the briefcase goes to the counter spies. All right, very well. You shall have your money. <laughs> I wasn't worried for a second. Love. Don't be insolent. Why not? I can afford it. I'll have the money for you at 11 o'clock tonight. Where do I pick it up? My home. 245 Ridgewood Drive. Ridgewood Drive. Okay, love, I'll be there. Here's your drink, Mitchell. Oh, and just right. Thank you, love. To your very good health, Elise. And to yours. May you always feel as wonderful as you look. <laughs> <laughs> and may you always be as truthful as you sound. <laughs> <sighs> so much for that. Uh, why did you ask Omak to come here to your house, Elise? I don't want him seen near the shop again. It's much too risky, darling. Hmm. Quite a fellow, isn't he? Or should I say felon? He's been useful. Let's see now. Within the short space of 24 hours, he's committed a hold-up, blackmail... And incidentally gave way to a touch of kleptomania. Very impressive. Kleptomania? Of course, yesterday in the shop. You heard Doreen describe his attempt to palm a teakwood piece just before we arrived? Perhaps she made it up. Oh, come now, my dear. Does it sound so incredible, considering what Omak is? Besides, why would Doreen make up a thing like that? I wouldn't know, would you? No. And, by the way, she knows nothing of our... Business transactions in the Orient, does she? No. And the less she knows about anything concerning us, the better. Why, Elise, I would almost think you're jealous of Doreen from your tone of voice. Would you now? Yes, but you've no reason to be. Look, oh, that must be Omak. I'll let him in. 
come in. Thank you. Well, well, say, quite a joint you got here. A little far from town, though, ain't it? Do you have the briefcase? You're looking at it. Hi, right, Jack. If you're talking to me again, again, I'll leave Jack out of it this time. Take it easy, Governor. Just, uh, just being friendly. I'll huh? take the briefcase if you don't mind. First, my payoff if you don't mind. Just as you say. I'll get it from my desk. You uh, mind if I have a drink? See, you got a few spread around here. Take mine if you like. I haven't touched it. Well, thank you. And believe me, I wouldn't mind if you did, love. Now, see here, O'Mac. Disregard you... him, Mitchell. Sure, Monroe. Do that. After tonight, you two won't be bothered with me anymore. Well, here's to the end of a beautiful friendship, huh? Something wrong, O'Mac. Uh, this drink... Now, look at the mess you've made. You... You put something in the drink. Only a drug. A very quick, effective, and deadly poison. I'll... I'll kill you. A very quick poison, Omac. Even quicker when you expend energy unnecessarily. I'll get you. I'll... The end of a beautiful friendship. Exactly as he said. Elise. I should have let you in on my little plan, I suppose. Well, I... I didn't expect anything like this. Don't be so shocked, darling. After all, you realize you can't trust a blackmailer. He would have eventually given us away, you know. You really do mean business, don't you? Yes, Mitchell, I really do. Now let's get rid of him. Well, that's about the size of it, Mr. Harding, and I have no idea how he got into that hotel room. Or who could have sent him, Mr. Trevor? No, I'm afraid not. My completion of the draft, as well as my trip to the Capitol, was strictly secret, as far as I know. But you'll be able to identify this man when we pick him up. Oh, absolutely, Mr. Peters. Mr. Hardy, isn't it possible that he's passed the plans to another party by now? Yes, more than likely. Can't a new draft of your survey be substituted? Oh, yes, yes, certainly. With putting in another seven or eight months on relocations and shifting schedules... It's not the happiest situation, I can tell you. And time's important. So it's a question of retrieving what we have or substituting a plan which at best will be inferior to the original. Well, we can't risk the operation of your plan, Mr. Trafford, as long as there's a chance of its being known to unfriendly powers. Then you've got to get it back to me, sir, before it's somehow shipped out of the country. We'll try, Mr. Trafford. You can be sure of that. We're going to try every way possible. Well, hello, Doreen. Oh, Mr. Monroe. Oh, I didn't expect to find you in Elisa's office. I was just filing some invoices. Miss Pomeroy should be back shortly. Good. We, uh, we can wait together, hmm? Of course, Mr. Monroe. Oh, no. My name is Mitchell. Uh, Miss Pomeroy might not like me to call you that. Oh, well, Miss Pomeroy isn't here. And my friends call me by my first name. I consider you a friend. Do you? Yes. I'm glad. I've always been afraid she might misunderstand. Elise? Oh, not at all. What is there to misunderstand? Well... Doreen, do you like me? Yes. Yes, I do. I like you, too. Will you be going away soon? Yes, I'm afraid so. Within a few days. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you? Yes. I'll be back, though. Will you? Mm-hmm. But until I... Uh... I uh, oh. hope I'm not oh. interrupting anything. Uh, hello, uh, Elise. I've been waiting for you. Not expecting me quite so soon. Well, as a matter of fact, I was getting a bit impatient. I'm glad you were able to find a way of containing your impatience. Doreen, you'd better get out front in the shop. Uh, yes, Miss Before you go, Doreen. Yes? I want you to remember something. What is it? This. <laughs> now, go about your business. And remember that... I'll be sure to remember it, Miss Pomeroy. Why did you do that? You know, without being told, so we won't discuss it. For heaven's sake, Elise, behave sensibly. Be quiet. You and your affairs are unimportant at the moment. I've had the plan we stole from Trafford microfilmed. You'll leave with it on the first boat out of San Francisco for Hong Kong. When is that? Tomorrow night. Are you coming along with no, me? No. Because everything we do from now on will be done on a strictly business basis. Really? Yes. So mind your step, lover. You know the way I do business.
You are listening to the case of the kleptomaniac clues on Counter Spy. There's a big evening's entertainment with the chimes today and every Sunday over most of these same NBC stations. The big show brings you 90 minutes of the very best in comedy, music, and drama with Tallulah, the distaff dynamo, and the leading personalities of show business. The Phil Harris Alice Faye show means 30 mad and delightful minutes with the unconventional Harrises and their friends. Hedda Hopper brings you dramatized stories of Broadway and Hollywood. Tales of the Texas Rangers stars Joel McRae in an authentic drama from the files of the nation's oldest police force. And genial Jack Parr quizzes a group of courageous contestants on the $64 question. Remember, the chimes are your invitation. Now, back to Counter Spy. Agent Braden to Harding, San Francisco field office. Braden to Harding. Harding, go ahead, Braden. The body of a man, fitting description, furnished by Mr. Trafford, was found on the outskirts of the city. Death by poisoning. Identification, Charles Omak. He is now at the city morgue. All right, no further instructions, Braden. Yes, Chief. Pick up Mr. Trafford, Peters, and meet me at the city morgue. A dead man just turned up who may be the one. We'll need Trafford to identify him. Yes, yes, that's him. That's the man who took my briefcase. You're certain, Mr. Trevor? Absolutely. The, uh, his driver's license said uh, Charles Omac. Does that name mean anything to you? Mm, no, no, nothing. They found this in his pocket, Mr. Harding. Oh, let's see up here. Hmm. Teakwood. Little teakwood figure. Odd thing for a guy who was also carrying a 38. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Harding, will you need me any further? Oh, not at the moment, Mr. Trevin. Then I'll leave if you don't mind. I don't care for the atmosphere of a morgue very much. No, nor do we. Come on, Peter. Any place special, Chief? Yes. Very special, I think. I'd like to help you, Mr. Harding, of course, but I don't see how I can. Well, this man Omak was carrying in his pocket a small teakwood figure on the base of which was the name of your shop, Miss Pomeroy. Well, that's strange, I'll admit, but I'm at a total loss to explain it. You're quite sure that you've never heard the name Charles Omak? I'm sure I'd remember if I had. Would you have any record of sale on such an item? Hardly. Not a terribly expensive piece. That one sells for two dollars. And as you can see, I have many more of the same type on display here in my shop. Yes, I see. I, uh... Oh, hello, Mitchell. Hello, Alice. This is my business associate, Mr. Monroe. Mitchell, this is Mr. Harding and Mr. Peters of the United States Counter Spies. Gentlemen, how do you do? Oh, how are you? They seem to think that we might have information concerning a man named Omac who was killed recently. Omac? Ever hear the name, Mr. Monroe? No, no, I don't believe I have. Well, we'll bother you no further at the moment. Should anything of importance occur to you, you contact, of course. Of course. Goodbye. Thank you very much. That dame is quite a number, huh, Chief? Maybe a wrong number. Get a stake out on this shop, Peters. You think they're lying? That's what we've got to find out. For sure. Harding speaking. Mr. Harding, this is Doreen Bridgeton. Yes? I work in Miss Pomeroy's shop. I was there this afternoon when you were questioning her. Let's go on. I remained out of sight, but I could hear everything that was said. I see. Go ahead, Miss Bridgen. She lied to you. She did know a man named Omac. He was in the shop the day before yesterday. Will you swear to that in court? Should we call upon you? I'll be happy to, Mr. Harding. Most happy to. Well, where can you be reached? Hello? Hello? Yes? Peters, I'm fine, Mr. Harding. Thank you. Go ahead, Peters. Dave, I have that stake out on the curio shop, and I personally tailed Monroe. What did you find out? He picked up a steamship ticket for the Tregania, leaving for Hong Kong tomorrow night. I checked with the clerk. Any report on the shop itself? No, not yet. What do we do about Monroe? Stop him? Yes, but not officially. If he's a decoy and not carrying the papers, I don't want a false arrest charge. That'll tip our hand completely. We've got to stall him without him knowing we've done it. How? Well, a call to the customs department ought to do the trick. Now, in the meantime, put a surveillance squad on a girl named Doreen Bridgeton. She works for Elise Pomeroy. 
She may not realize it, but Miss Bridgeton is a sitting duck right this minute. I'll come in, Peter. I got a check in from Braden, Mr. Harding. Monroe's gone to the dock. Good. I expect a call from customs on that any minute. Now, you have a man watching Doreen Bridgeton's apartment, huh? Since last night. Good. Oh, this is it. We hope. Harding. Yes. Oh, fine. Fine. No, no, nothing else. And thank you very much. All right. Goodbye. What's it? The customs people wound Mr. Monroe in red tape, the details of which I'll spare you, and revoked his passport temporarily. Which means he won't sail tonight. Or any other night. Now, we've got to move fast. First, we'll have the Bridgen girl picked up. We'll need her later. Then, we'll see what the deluxe quarters aboard a luxury liner look like, Peter. Hey, I like that part. Don't pack, though. We're traveling light. Mitchell! Hello, Elise. What are you doing here? Why aren't you aboard ship? <laughs> It seems the best laid schemes of mice and men... Will you make sense? All right, my passport's been revoked. I can't say. What? I think I speak distinctly. How did that happen? I don't know. Some sort of a mix-up on dates. Oh, you are an idiot. This changes everything. Give me your ticket. Huh? Ticket? You still have that, don't you? Yes. Well, give it to me. All right. Well, what are you going to do? I have an hour and a half to make the boat. I'll sail in your place. Where's the microfilm? My wristwatch case. Well, give it to me. All huh? right. Here, take it. I've got to rush. At least my passport's in order. Now, listen, you can't leave me here holding the bag, my sweet. I won't take oh, it. Oh, do be still. You're such a bore. A bore, is it? We'll see how boring I am. Uh, hello, operator. I'd like you to put me through to the United States counter spies. Yes, please, and, and hurry. Countess Byfield, office. My name is Mitchell Monroe. I... We should be at the dock in a few minutes, Mr. Harding. Hope our suspect doesn't miss the boat. We'll ask the captain to postpone sailing time if necessary. But I don't think it will be. Agent Braden to David Harding in control, car S-1. Harding, come in, Braden. Mitchell Monroe was shot and killed about 15 minutes ago while attempting to call our field office from a pay station. How did you check it that quickly, Braden? The receiver was off the hook. We got a police report on it within a few minutes after. All right, Braden, no instructions. Little Elise is going to have plenty to answer for, Chief. Let's get to that boat, Peters. Step on it. time is it, Peter? 20 minutes to midnight and it's sailing time, too. I wish something would break, Chief. It will. Don't worry. I'm getting a little too accustomed to the grandeur of this deck cabin. Kind of tempts me to chuck everything and go for a little cruise myself. Well, Miss Pomeroy. Mr. Harding. Come in, Miss Pomeroy. What are you doing here? We ask the same of you. Just how dare you ask me anything? What right of you to be in my cabin? We thought it was Mr. Monroe's cabin. It's in his name. What of it? He had passport trouble. But nothing that wouldn't clear up in a day or so, he'd have been able to sail. It must be urgent business that prompts you to so hurriedly take his place. I want you to leave immediately. When we leave, lady, you're leaving with us. On what charge? Treason for one. Murder for another. Ridiculous. I think we'll be able to make it stick, Miss Pomeroy. I'm sure that a thorough search of your belongings will reveal the presence of certain top-secret plans for wartime mobilization of industry in this country. You're mad. Probably on microfilm. And added to that, we have the eyewitness testimony of Doreen Bridgeton that you knew Charles Omack, knew him well. She's lying. She's trying to get even for a personal difference. You know Mitchell Monroe is dead? What? Murdered? No. No, I didn't know. You're almost convincing. He's probably telling the truth, Peters. I don't think she'd have had time to kill Monroe. If you're going to arrest me, then do so, and let's get off this boat. Not so fast, Miss Pomeroy. There's more where you came from, so let's just wait here for a few minutes and see who it is. What do you mean? I'm sure you know exactly what I mean. Uh, Elise, do you... Well, have... come in, Mr. Travard. What the... <laughs> hey, what is this, Harding? Don't you know? Oh, I certainly don't. Then I'll tell you. You had yourself robbed of your own plans. 
robbed. What are you talking about? Omac didn't know you. Miss Pomeroy did the hiring and carefully pointed you out. A perfect way of deflecting any and all suspicion from yourself. <laughs> Why, that's absolutely ridiculous. You had a neat setup for an espionage agent, Trafford. You enjoyed the confidence of high government officials while you were planning to transmit your industrialization plans to an unfriendly power. You don't know what you're saying. Neither one of you do. But you made one small slip. According to the desk clerk of the hotel here in San Francisco, it was 2 o'clock when you checked in. They won't listen to this. You'd better listen, Trafford, and close, because the United States attorney is going to ask you questions later. When you arrived at the hotel, there was a southbound train leaving San Francisco at that very moment. So there was no reason for you to have been anywhere but on that train. No reason but your own personal one. Harding, you're making a grave error. The error is all yours, Trafford, for showing up here in Miss Pomeroy's cabin. What's the angle for your coming, Trafford? Skipping? Or just to give her some last-minute instructions? It couldn't have concerned the microfilm plans. You have your own copies, I'm sure. Now, don't move any of you. Is that the gun that killed Monroe? A ballistics test should tell. There won't be any test. I don't know about that. My agents have the dock area completely surrounded. They let you in, but they're sure not to let you out, except with me. I'm willing to run the risk. Now stay right where you are. Don't leave me, George. Sorry, Elise. I have to travel light now. I'm sorry. You no good. Come on, Peters. There he is, Chief. Stop or I'll shoot, Trafford. He's headed for the rail. Stop, Trafford. Stop or we'll fire. Let him have it. He's falling overboard. He's finished, Chief. Yes, but Miss Pomeroy isn't. Not yet. She'll stand trial and pay the penalty all traitors eventually pay. Tune in every week. Same time, same station to Counter Spy. Listen next week for the exciting case of the captured contact. When a famous lecturer canceled his tour, a solicitous friend canceled his life by murder. How a weak eye and a strong arm led your counter spies into a most intriguing adventure will be unfolded next week in Case of the Captured Contact on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counterspy program originated in New York, was directed by Marks B. Loeb, dramatized by Edward J. Adamson, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer. Lionel Rico speaking. Counterspy is a Phillips H. Lord production. The preceding transcribed. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. NBC.